Hey guys and welcome to Cool Vision. In this video we're going to be talking about Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a country in the South Caucasus region that is bounded by the Caspian Sea to the east, Russia to the north, Georgia to the northwest, Armenia and Turkey to the west, and Iran to the south. Azerbaijan also has a landlocked exclave known as the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic. The population of the country is 10,164,000 people. Azerbaijan is not very well known throughout the world, so let's change that. What's so special about Azerbaijan? Well, first it has a wide variety of landscapes and 9 out of 11 existing climate zones, from deserts to the snow-capped mountains. Also, it has delicious food and friendly people. Through different time periods, this area was part of Caucasian Albania, Iranian dynasties, Russian Empire and the USSR. The Republic of Azerbaijan proclaimed its independence from the Soviet Union on August 30th, 1991. Since then, it has come a long way, but it had an obvious advantage over the other USSR republics two-thirds of the country is rich in oil and natural gas. First industrial oil production in Azerbaijan started in 1847, that is 11 years prior to oil discovery in Pennsylvania, USA. By the turn of the 20th century, Azerbaijan was producing nearly half of the world's oil. Today, the country's nominal GDP is over $73 billion. It's a huge step forward since 2004, when it was less than $8 billion. The national currency is the Manat. Let's take a look at the major cities of the country. Baku is the capital and the largest city of Azerbaijan, with a population of 2,293,000 people. It is situated on the western coast of Caspian Sea, on the southern shore of the Apsharan Peninsula. Baku is sitting 28 meters below sea level, which makes it the lowest lying national capital in the world. How's that possible? Because the Caspian Sea is also below sea level. The main attraction of the city is Isherishahar, or the inner city. Within the inner city lies the Palace of Shirvanshahs, a royal retreat dating back to the 15th century, and the centuries-old stone maiden tower, which dominates the city skyline. It's a city within a city. In 2007, it had a population of about 3,000 people. Carpet merchants, men playing backgammon, and a labyrinth of narrow, well-groomed streets with foreign embassies, restaurants, and souvenir shops. <laughs> When the oil boom happened at the end of the 19th century, it attracted all kinds of people from Russians to rich Europeans who not only got rich on Azerbaijani's black gold, but they introduced European style and architecture. Thus the city earned the reputation of the Paris of the East. The state oil company of Azerbaijan Republic, known as Sokar, is a fully state-owned national oil and gas company headquartered in Baku. Funny fact is that gas price in the country is fixed. Very convenient, no matter which gas station you go to is going to be the same. And price for regular gas in 2022 is $2.2 per gallon. Baku has many universities, the largest of which are Baku State University and Azerbaijan State Economic University. Tourism is growing and I met a lot of foreign tourists from different countries. Let's talk to them. I'm Rida. I'm Bader. And where do you come from? We are originally from Morocco. Morocco. We are coming from Abu Dhabi, UAE, United Arab Emirates. All right. How do you like it in Baku? That's so far, nice. so nice. <laughs> where do you come from? Come from the United States, St. Louis, Missouri. Yes. It's good stuff. And what are you doing in Baku? Uh, I, well, we just got married. This is my wife, Fidan. Uh, we met in the United States and her, she's from here, so we've been hanging out with her family, just getting to know each other. The official language is Azerbaijani, which is a Turkic language, but I was surprised that Russian is also widely spoken, and the younger generation speaks English. Would you say the usage of Russian language is kind of decreasing? Most of people of older generation, they used to live in Soviet Union, and the main language in Soviet Union was Russian, that's why they're good in Russian. and. The only people from youth who knows Russian is like uh, we're children of people who lived in that era where, where Russian was the main language. As, but now it's decreasing and English is more common because overall in the whole world uh, everyone speaking in English is like main language, right? Baku began reinventing itself as an ultra-modern metropolis starting from the early 2000s and now the city has a lot of impressive architecture like the Haider Ali of Cultural Center. It's a museum of modern art designed by Pritzker Prize winning architect Zaha Hadid. Inside you'll find many different exhibitions about Azerbaijan and its history, as well as an automobile exhibition. 
Azerbaijan Carpet Museum. In the shape of a folded carpet, this place Azerbaijani carpets and rugs of various weaving techniques from different periods. The Crescent Hotel, Dennis Mall, which reminds me of Sydney Opera, and of course the Flame Tower, some of the most iconic structures of Baku. They represent flames of fire because this region is known as the land of fire. One of the towers is used as condos, the second one as bureaus and offices, and the third one is the Fairmount Hotel. Baku has a wide range of mesmerizing architecture from different time periods. Look at the Palace of Happiness, 12th century Romana Tower, the City Hall Building, Nizami Museum of Azerbaijan Literature, Azerbaijan State Philharmonic Hall, and many beautiful mosques like Haider Mosque, Taza Pir Mosque, and the Bibi Haybat Mosque, which is a recreation of the 13th century mosque that was destroyed by the Bolsheviks. Baku Waterfront Boulevard is my favorite part. It's a pedestrian promenade that was established in 1909, which runs parallel to Baku's seafront. There's an amusement park, ferry's wheel, a yacht club, musical fountains, and lots of restaurants. And even a mini Venice with gondolas. How cool is that? It's a great place to go jogging or cycling or walking your dog. Baku has hosted a lot of international events like the Eurovision in 2012, the 2015 European Games, and Formula One race on the Baku city circuit, with a track going around the old city. The city has cool taxi cabs. These black and purple and yellow cabs were introduced in 2011, and they look like London cabs. You only find these cabs in two cities in the world, that is London and Baku. But they are pretty expensive, so if you are in a budget, you can use Bolt app to get a ride. It's really, really affordable. When it comes to public transportation, Baku has buses and a subway system that was opened in 1967, and it has three lines and 25 stations at present. A single ride for subway and buses is just 18 cents. There's also the Baku funicular that can take you to the flame towers. There are many new residential areas being built, like Baku White City, which kind of reminds me of Paris. What do you think? It's going to be a community for about 50,000 people. How much is a one-bedroom apartment here? It's around $84,000. Baku has a modern international airport that was designed by a Turkish firm. I really enjoyed the famous cocoons, that is, wooden pods on the top layer. They house cafes, bars, as well as children's play areas. Baku men love conspicuous consumption. And if you want to show everyone that you've made it, you gotta have a Mercedes G-Wagon. Typical salaries in Baku range from $300 to $500 a month. A taxi driver told me that he makes around 30 bucks a day, but you can tell by the average salary and the cars that you see on the streets that there's an obvious income disparity. In the vicinity of the city, there are many places to visit, like mud volcanoes, salt lakes, and natural gas fires like Yanar Dug, which means a burning mountain. True to its name, the mountain has been blazing for at least 65 years. I'm at a place called Yanar Dug, and it's a natural gas fire that's been here for who knows how long. But it was only discovered in 1950 by a shepherd who accidentally lit it. Atejgo of Baku, or the Fire Temple of Baku, is a castle-like religious temple that was used as a Hindu, Saikh, and Zoroastrian place of worship. Ooh, mysterious. Gobustan, it's a historical and cultural reserve located 60 kilometers southwest of Baku. You'll find more than 6,000 rock carvings depicting people, animals, ritual dances, and camel caravans dating back to 5,000 to 20,000 BC. It covers a huge area of 537 hectares, but only a small portion is open to the public. They call Baku the Windy City. You wonder why? Well, let me show you. I nearly had my car blown up the road once. Scary. This car just got turned over. <laughs> now, let's see the rest of the country. How are we gonna travel? Should you rent a car in Azerbaijan? I would say absolutely yes. If you wanna go places, you gotta have a car. So I rented this Hyundai for 30 bucks a day. Hotels normally average around 30 to $50 a night. Roads are of good quality, but a heads up, don't stay in the left lane on the freeway or you'll be fine at the nearest police station. It happened to me four times until I figured out what I was doing wrong. Police will often offer to pay in cash half the amount, but that's a little secret. 
Taking a road trip is safe and fun. Along the roads you will see vendors selling seasonal fruits. There are plenty of rest areas and restaurants. Once you leave Baku, you'll start seeing a lot more Ladas. That is all Soviet cars, because outside of Baku, wages are a lot lower. Okay, now we're gonna visit the second largest city of Azerbaijan, and that is Sungait. Hey guys, and welcome to Sumgayit, which is the second largest city in Azerbaijan. The population is 345,000 people. It's a pretty in industrial city, not too many sites, but the seaside promenade is very nice and they have uh, Sumgayit State University. It's located 31 kilometers away from Baku. Founded in 1949, Sumgayit grew rapidly as a major chemical and metallurgical center. Its plants produce aluminum, steel pipes, synthetic rubber, petrochemicals and much more. All of this unfortunately jeopardized the environmental situation and now it's one of the most polluted areas in the country. The city used to have a tram and trolley bus system in the Soviet days, but now it's just buses, mini buses and taxis. Around the city there are more than 20 beaches and even a water park and because you can't swim in Baku, people would drive here to spend some time on the beach. The waterfront boulevard and the Simi Park are popular places to hang out, relax and watch the sunset. Peace Dove is a famous sculpture in Nesimi Park and is the symbol of Sumgayit. Let's talk to some locals. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Slava. Uh, my name is Ravshan. Ravshan. Nice to meet you, Ravshan. What's your name? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Beautiful city. It's a video. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> now let's travel to the northwest of the country to the city of Ganja. Ganja is the third largest city with a population of 335,000 people. Contrary to Sumgayit, Ganja has a lot of history and dates back 1500 years. In the past, different rulers controlled the region, including Arabs, Persians, Turks, and Russians. Fortress of Ganja, or rather the remains of the 16th century fortress, welcomes you as you enter the city. The economy of Ganja is based on agriculture, tourism and some industries. For example, ore minerals extraction from nearby mines supply Ganja's metallurgical plants that produce copper and alumina. Ganja is home to four major universities, including Ganja State University. Let's talk to some locals. What do you Ganja? Well, we like atmosphere. If I uh, finish university, uh, I graduate. I want to graduate master in foreign uh, country, maybe Germany or Russia. Germany. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And what do you want to study at the at the university? Uh, law. Law. Lawyer, yeah. Okay. Very inshallah. <laughs> I'm Ali and I'm Sadzat. What do you like about Ganja? I, 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 first, I like the Ganja's people, people of Ganja. Okay. Yes, and Ganja's uh, food. For example, Ganja uh, Pahlava. Actually, I study in here. Okay, and uh, what's your major? What do you study? Veterinary, veterinary doctor. Veterinary, yes, veterinary, veterinary medicine. medicine, yeah. Okay. Like Sumgayit, the city also used to have a trolley bus system and a tram system, but not anymore. Most sites are located around Haydar Aliyev Square. This is where you find Ganja City Hall. If this building looks familiar to you, don't worry. There's a twin of this building in Tbilisi, Georgia. This one. Right next to the square you'll find Juma Mosque. This mosque is called Shah Abbas Mosque, or also known as Juma Mosque. It was built in 1606, but the minarets were only added in 1776. Shah Abbas was a king of Iran in the 17th century. Let's go inside. Right across the mosque you'll find Choche Hammam, or Turkish bath house that was built in 1606. Javad Han Mausoleum. Javad Han was the last of the rulers of the Ganja Hanate and Ganja State Philharmonic Hall, a concert hall for 1200 people. If you want to stay at a really historic place, try Shah Abbas Caravanserai. It dates to the 17th century and was built during the reign of that same Shah Abbas. Altogether it has 54 rooms. 
So if you're in Ganja, you're welcome to stay here. Alexander Nevsky Church reflects Russia's occupation of Azerbaijan, and it was built in 1887. Now let's take a walk along Javan Han Street. It's the busiest shopping street in the city. It's a focal point of the city lined with buildings from the Russian Empire era. Souvenir shops and cafes fill the lower floors of the attractive facades. If you're looking for some good coffee, try a London cafe. There's modern Ganjamol if you want to do some shopping, and the great indoor market called Bazaar, which was recently renovated, where you can buy some fresh fruits and drink some delicious tea. It feels more like a mall than a market. There are restaurants and bakeries and so much more. The city is green and has a lot of parks like Hans Garden, a lush park in the middle of the city. Another major park is Haider Aliyev Park. It's the largest park in the Caucasus. It's enormous. 450 hectares or 1100 acres. The lavish Arch of Triumph marks the main entrance. It's a nice place but maybe a little too large for my liking. Ruski, Angliski. No. Salam. Salam la. <laughs> Nizami Ganjavi is considered the greatest romantic epic poet in Persian literature. He was born and lived in Ganja. And there's also Nizami Mausoleum, not far from the city. A few kilometers northwest of Ganja lies the 14th century Imamzadeh Mausoleum, a sacred place in Shia Islam. Imamzadeh translates as the sons of prophets, referring to the burial place of Prophet Ali's descendants. Ganja is surrounded by beautiful locations, lush green meadows, mountains and lakes. For example, Lake Goigod, which literally means a blue lake. It's a deep mountain lake surrounded by a dense forest. It's just an hour away from the city. It had been closed for some time because of the ongoing conflict with Armenia and now only a small section is accessible to tourists. So don't expect a day of hiking or exploring. Wow, fantastic scenery, right? There are certain restrictions on taking pictures, some objects you cannot take pictures of, and also you cannot hire a boat. I wanted to get a boat, you know, kind of go around the lake and get some footage, but it's impossible. But driving to this place through the mountains and traditional villages is absolutely worth it. You can also visit different remote locations in the mountains like Gadabe, a small town of 9,000 people. It is absolutely picturesque, so let's take a moment to enjoy the scenery. I met a shepherd in the mountains, so let's talk. <laughs> I ran into these guys at a local restaurant and they invited me to have some tea in the mountains. Great hospitality. These are the guys. Vova and Rufai. Now let's travel to the very south of the country, to the city of Lankara. Lankara is a city in southern Azerbaijan, just 30 kilometers away from the border with Iran. So I found the central square of Lankara, and you know this region is famous for its agriculture. It's enjoying a subtropical climate, so you got lemons, you got kiwi fruit, you got a lot of other things that they're growing. So I wanted to visit a tea plantation and maybe a fruit farm. The population is 88,000 people. They call it the Sri Lanka of Azerbaijan because this area gets the highest precipitation in the country. Among city sites are Dosa Park, 18th century Zindan Fortress and Han Palace, which has been turned into Lankara Museum of History and Ethnography. It's hot and I'm thirsty for some high quality tea, so let's visit a tea plantation. And uh, they produce two black tea. It's going to be black tea. And how big is this plantation? Uh, biggest, yes. We uh, do then uh, 100 hectares. This is the plantation of Astro Chai Company. It's 100 hectares and it's going to be nice black tea. I have a lot of tea. I have a lot of organic tea. Astro Chai, Shahlaran, Chai, Dr. Astro Chai. Without pesticide. Pesticide. No, no pesticides. I can understand organic. It's organic tea. I understand. 
Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Há que mais nada. Há para todos os dias de nada. Se tiver a cena, se tiver só muito cá todo. Uh huh. Now it's time to drink my well-deserved cup of tea. <laughs> I also visited Citrus Garden and met some awesome people. Let's go for a walk around the garden. So I have come to Citrus Valley and I came unannounced. Nobody's expecting me. Just walked in through the gate. These are just gorgeous. It's getting windy a little bit. Love it. What's your name? Saeed. What's your name? Sarah. So Sarah, are you going to show us the garden? Yeah. Kiwi fruit. Yeah, but there's no kiwi right now. Right. Um, flowers. Which we need to say. Which come after kiwi. Newborn baby ultras. The best ones are in the top. But these are many. Wow, that's a lot. It's really nice. Tangerine. It's really pretty. Yeah. So yeah. this is an orange. Come here. There are bees here. Oh, bees right now. That one. It's a little lemon. Let's give it a few months, it'll grow. So this is a cat, he's seven months old. Uh, he's a boy, his name is Bonbon, bon bon, and he's a Persian cat. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Did you guys notice how fluent Sarah's English was? And no, she's not American. She's a girl from Baku that goes to some international school. Salam. <laughs> so I came to this restaurant, it's called Dad House, and I was recommended it, so let's go and check it out. Ooh. So it's meat, meat with pomegranates. Alright, let's say goodbye to subtropical Lankara and relocate to a historical city that once stood on the Silk Road, Shiki. Shiki is a small town with a population of 68,000 people, located on the forested slopes of the Greater Caucasus Mountains. It's renowned for its fascinating architecture, food and hospitality. One of the main draws is the country's newest UNESCO heritage site, the Shiki Hans Palace. And this is the most famous building of Shiki. It's called Shiki Hans Palace. And it was built in 1763. And it belonged to Shiki Hans, the ruling family of that time. The building has six rooms and two balconies. And on the inside, it's absolutely beautiful. And you'll see a lot of examples of shebeke. That is a special way of preparing steel glass. Besides the summer palace, there's also the winter palace which was just recently discovered. The most famous Shaky Hans Palace is the Summer Palace, the one that I showed you before. But this one's the Winter Palace of Shaky Hans. And this is the one that gets overlooked by tourists a lot. You can easily spend a few days in Shiki, visiting craft workshops, museums, wandering the charming back streets, and trying local cuisine, like the local Shiki specialty called Piti, which is a lamb and chickpea soup. Let me show you how to eat it. First, you uh, tear apart some bread, and you pour some broth on top of it. And then the second stage is you um, smash and eat the rest. So let's do it. It started as a worker's man meal because it's so substantial. You get the first course and the second course all in one meal. Also, you have to try local desserts like shiki halva or pahlava. This type of halva is thought to have originated in ancient Mesopotamia. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest place to stay in Shiki is Caravansarai Hotel. Caravansarai is probably one of the most unique hotels in this area because it's been around since the 18th century and a lot of the traders back then were staying in it while they were on their way through the Silk Road. It's an 18th century hotel. The rooms have been converted from the original sleeping chambers that once housed Silk Road traders. They're still very basic, but it's all about the atmosphere. As I entered the hotel, I met Ravana, who happened to be the director of the hotel, and she offered to give me a tour. I said, yes, please. Mm -hmm. 
I also made friends with El Jun, a local football coach, a great guy who's trying to encourage more girls to play soccer, because the Azerbaijani society is very conservative, especially outside of Baku, and mostly expects women to become housewives, cooks and doctors. He invited me to come see one of the local games at the stadium. Wow, it's hard to stay focused on the game in such a breathtaking place. El Jun, I'm in the city of Shiki and I want you to meet my friend, Tural. I was born in Shiki. Uh, I am a small businessman. Uh, I have PlayStation Club. Good. Thanks. What's your favorite game? Uh, my favorite game is soccer. Do you want to live here forever or do you want to maybe travel the world? Maybe I want to go other country for my kids, for uh, education. Which country? Uh, UK, USA or other European countries. Okay. The area around Shiki is incredible. You can make day trips, visit in waterfalls, old bridges, churches, ancient defense towers and so much more. Make sure you do some hiking. My friend Eljun took me to Perigala, which in Azerbaijani literally means a fairy castle. A limestone brick structure built 300 meters up the side of a cliff. Took a lot of effort to get there, but it was worth it. Tarihi məlum değil, ancaq onu 3. 5. əsrə aid edirlər tarixçilərimiz buradan tapılan qalıqlara görə. Pəri qalasını bənzər bir qala, mən Azərbaycanda başqa bir bənzər qala görməmişəm. Bura çıldırım qayaların üzərindədir, yol da çox çətindir. Yəni, bir yol var bura gəlmək üçün. About an hour away from Şiki, you'll find another popular town, Gabala. Once it was the ancient capital of Caucasian Albania, but now it's a popular tourist destination with a winter skiing resort, Tufandak Ski Complex, one of the best ski resorts in Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, the cable car was closed during my visit, so I had to express my anger and I went to the shooting club instead. I have to say, restaurants in Gabala are some of the most impressive ones that I've seen. They're huge like parks. Combine that with excellent food and service, and you're not going to live disappointed. Oh. In Gabala, I met with Tabakul from Wilderness Cooking. Fresh air, fresh food, it doesn't get better than this. Who runs a fantastic YouTube channel about outdoor cooking and living in peace with nature, and we cooked some delicious lamb. I have a separate video about it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. <laughs> Super. Super. <laughs> now let's relocate to another city that lies on the northeastern slopes of Shahdak Mountain, Kuba. Kuba has a population of 38,000 people. It has enjoyed strong economic growth over the last decade, much of it spurred by tourism. Some points of interest are Juma Mosque. This mosque was built completely of red brick in 1802. Nizami Park that was built by captured Germans in 1946. There are plenty of uh, small booths where people can have lunch and get together with their friends, have some tea, because tea is a tradition, right? Yeah. Wonderful place. Как вас зовут? Муса. Очень приятно. А вот как часто вы собираетесь в парке попить чай? Почти каждый день. Каждый день? Да, после работы. Чем занимаетесь? Я спортсмен. А. Да, чемпион мира. Кто? Гриммский Убили в 1918 году азербайджанцы, вот стой, говорим, в стадион ездить. Горы, река течет, и леса, mm -hmm. а там море. Это единственное место, может быть, в мире. Yeah, все есть, все есть у нас. Люди здесь прекрасные, любят, 
и туристов любят, и, и всех. Салам. Wow. Nearby you'll find a unique settlement, Krasna Sloboda, or Red Village. It was established in the 18th century by mountain Jews, who continue to live here today. It's historically been inhabited by mountain Jews, and in fact this museum is called Mountain Jews Museum. Red Village is the only entirely Jewish settlement outside of Israel and the U.S. And this one's one of the synagogues. Красная Слобода это же где евреи живут? Да, 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 здесь все евреи. Да, все евреи? Все евреи. Колледж есть там еврейский. Хорошо. Все есть там. Синагоги есть раз, два, три. Старый мост есть там. Угу. Лет, лет 150 вот так. Угу. Там. Еврейский, еврейский есть колледж. Дети а, учат. Еврей, да? Да, ага. да учат дети. А с Израилем какие-то связи есть? О, каждый день переезжает день. Сколько самолетов? Из, из Израиля, да? Израиль, да. Mm -hmm. Kuba is located in the very picturesque place surrounded by forests and mountains. From here you can take a trip to a high mountain village, Kinali. Как коня зовут? Зовут Чехар. Чехар? Чехар, Чехар. We'll be traveling to a very remote village. This is the kind of road we'll be taking. That's just a car for these roads. <laughs> You can get here in a regular car, no problem. It's about a 40 minute drive. It's getting colder and we've already found some snow. Look, real snow. And down below, there's a river. I'm telling you, it's gonna be scary. Oh boy. Sometimes the road gets so narrow and there's rocks on top and you're thinking something might follow my head, right? And luckily it hasn't been raining for the last few days, so the road at least is dry. It's an ancient village with a population of about 2,000 people going back to the Caucasian Albanian period. It's located high up in the mountains, 2,000 meters above sea level, surrounded by some of the highest peaks in Azerbaijan. And finally, we've reached the village of Kinalik. And it's pretty chilly out here, you see, I put on my sweater. Now, this village is a pretty ancient one and it has very different traditions from, from other regions. They have their own language. And because it's so hard to reach, they kept a lot of their traditions that are very unique. What's your name? Merab. Merab. Nice to meet you. My name is Slava. You got some natural fertilizers straight from the cows. And those are the houses, mostly made of stone. There's a local museum where you can see ancient carpets, various house utensils, pottery, ceramic dishes and weapons. Also in this area you will find Shahdag Mountain Resort, the first and the largest winter skiing resort in Azerbaijan. Now let's talk about cuisine. Azerbaijani cuisine reflects its unique geographical location on the crossroads of Europe and Asia with an access to the Caspian Sea. The Azerbaijani breakfast is heavy in dairy products, consisting of butter, various types of white cheese, cream, as well as honey, tandoori bread and eggs, and lots of tea. In Baku, a breakfast like this will cost you five to six dollars. Black tea is the national beverage and is drunk after food is eaten. It is also offered to guests as a gesture of welcome. They drink tea from Mermuda glasses. Sometimes rose water is added. I was surprised to still boil water in heated metal containers, known as samovars, which come from Russia. But in Russia, they're long forgotten. There are lots of different dairy products, like Iron, a savory dairy drink, or Dovga, a soup made from plain yogurt and herbs. Most national dishes are made with lamb, beef, and poultry meat. Lamb is very popular. That's why in every village you will see plenty of sheep. Some of the most famous dishes are plov, prepared with saffron-covered rice, served with various herbs and greens. There are 40 variations of this dish. A variety of kebabs, shashlik and ribs. Dolma, which is minced lamb or beef mixed with rice and flavored with mint, fennel and cinnamon, and wrapped in vine leaves. Kutab, sort of pancake turnover, stuffed with minced lamb, cheese or spinach. One of my personal favorites was Three Sisters, known as Uchbaji, the Three Sisters of Dolma, stuffed eggplants, peppers and tomatoes. One dish that I don't recommend to you though is hush. I tried it once and it was awful. 
It contains boiled cow or sheep parts, which might include the head, feet, and stomach. It's extremely pungent in smell, but it's known to battle hangovers. Light snacks and appetizers on the table are very important, and every time I was having dinner with locals, they always ordered way more food than we could have handled. And of course, the local delicacy is Caspian Sea caviar. What about politics? The current president of the country is Ilham Aliyev, who succeeded his father, Haydar Aliyev, and has been in power since 2003, that is for 19 years. Azerbaijan's best friend and strategic partner is Turkey. You'll see Turkish flags everywhere. They say one nation, two states. Azerbaijan recently completed the Southern Gas Corridor pipeline that is now bringing natural gas through Turkey directly to Europe and has significantly changed the energy map of Europe. The oil economy is also undergoing a resurgence with the development of the massive Azeri Chirag Gineshli field and the construction of the Baku Tbilisi Jehan pipeline, allowing Azerbaijan to get away from Russia's fear of influence. The conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the highland region of Karabakh had been going on since 1988. In November 2020, Azerbaijani army took control of the city of Shusha, which is a tiny little town in the Karabakh mountains with just 4,000 people. But Shusha, according to the Azeris, has a symbolic meaning because until the middle of the 19th century, Shusha, along with Tabriz, was considered the cultural and political center of the Shiite Turks, a people that would later be called Azerbaijanis. Haribulbul is one of the local flowers and a symbol of Shusha. Azerbaijan has no trade with Armenia and their border is closed. All throughout the country you will see political banners like this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, people don't know much about Azerbaijan and I had no idea what to expect. Is it safe? Is it not safe? It turned out it's very safe. The country has very little crime but it comes with some restrictions. The police presence in major cities is huge. You cannot take pictures of certain government buildings. Normally, if you see some armed security guards, it's safe to say, don't take that picture. Police stopped me a couple times and inquired what I was filming. Needless to say, flying a drone is out of the question, unless you find a local guy with a permit, which is hard to get. I went here and everything was open. You don't have to close the door? Here, it's calm. Really? No one Воров нету? Нет. <laughs> Почему? Куда все делись? Закон здесь хорошо. <laughs> Работает хорошо закон? Да. Спасибо. Despite economic growth in recent years, most people living in rural areas still make low wages. Agriculture is a major source of employment for them, but agriculture only makes up 6.7% of the GDP. Since 2022, the minimum pension was increased to $141 a month. What are the people like? My impression was that people are very polite, well-mannered and respectful. I didn't see any drunks or a single fight in the street. Around 97% of the population are nominally Muslims. But in reality, I was told, many people don't go to the mosque. Outside of the capital city of Baku, people are very conservative. Let me give you an example. We went to this restaurant in Shaki for a few beers and I couldn't find one single lady among the customers. I came to get some beer with my friends, and one thing I noticed, and one thing I noticed is that I don't see one single woman in the whole area. And Baku, it's very different, of course. People have a lot of respect for the elderly. They call them oxicals, which literally means white beard. So when you get old and grow a white beard, you become an oxical and one of the respected leaders of a village. Men would normally get together in the evening to chat and play some table games. The people of Azerbaijan have retained a lot of their traditions, like Mugam music. When performing Mugam, the singers have to transform their emotions into singing and music. Let's listen. Freestyle wrestling has traditionally been popular, but currently the most popular sport is football. Azerbaijan is also one of the traditional powerhouses of world chess. Just think about Garry Kasparov. Is the population growing? Yes. In 1960, it was 5 million. In 2010, it was 9 million. And in 2022, it's over 10 million. Any downsides? Unfortunately, I've seen some garbage along the remote roads. Let me show you. 
the trash problem is everywhere. Look, all covered in garbage. Got to do some cleaning. What else? In Transparency International's 2021 Corruption Perception Index, Azerbaijan was ranked 128, compared to 45 for Georgia and 58 for Armenia. On the bright side, Azerbaijan is becoming a popular tourist destination in this part of the world for religious, spa, and healthcare tourism. Most people come from Russia, Georgia, Iran, Pakistan, and Turkey. The number of visitors grew from 900,000 in 2006 to 3.1 million in 2019. And you can be one of them. All right, thanks for watching this video, guys. And let me know what you think about Azerbaijan and if you would like to visit this country. See you in my next video.